Good morning, everybody. Um, I've found out some interesting things, especially for the extruder motor. Um, yesterday, I was a little bit curious or I was fucked up because of the strange, strange noises that came from the dual drive. And I thought, okay, now it's getting worse and it's getting worse and it's making clicking noises, not, not, not over springs, just horrible metallic scratches. And yeah, it fucked me really up. And I disabled the whole X, uh, dual drive. Um, I will do this again. I will show you what, what I did. And I think I found a reason why it made these noises. Um, now it's, yeah, when, when I turn it, oh, I can't turn it, but yeah, I, I can't do it. Um, it's not making any noises anymore. And yeah, give me a second. I will disassemble it and show you what I did. So let us begin. Um, I disassembled the dual drive arm. Uh, for that reason, you just have to screw out the screw in the upper right corner, this one. Then you can pull out the complete arm out of the dual drive. Um, you notice I already put some grease on the gearing on this side. And in my opinion, or here in Germany, we have a rule with these mechanical things. When you have two metal gears going onto each other, you normally put some grease between it. And what I show you now is much more difficult. I, I won't say it's typical Chinese, but I have seen so many problems with not greasing or put grease into bearings, into gearings um, by Chinese things or Taiwan and anything else. Um, yeah, also on, on German and European things. This is this is a disease. What is happening? That some manufacturer think, okay, no, we don't put grease in here because fuck off. I don't know. Um, so when you open up. The complete arm. Um, everything I show you now, I already did. So don't be worried why there is also grease in it. You open up the screw. So be careful when you pull out the screw now. We have two shims on both sides and they are different. One of the shims got a little second ring, I would, I would say. Um, I don't know how to call it in English. Um, I, I will show you what I mean. Um, when you pull it out, uh, you see maybe one shim already sticked to the grease. I want that. Okay, let's lay it, lay it on one side. This is the lower shim. And I hope you can see this. This is just a completely regular shim. That comes on this side. And then on the other side, I would say on the upper part. Let's clean it a little bit. Ah, come on. Okay, a little bit too near. You have a little ring on one side. You see this? And this goes on the upper part because the gearing, uh, the bearings inside. Um, I don't know how they call it. I think linear bearings or. In German, we, we say Rillenkugellager. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they have no grease in it. And this is something I really don't like at mechanical parts. When I just, you can use the screw. And when you don't have grease in it, they're just falling out. So don't be worried, you can set them in back. These guys were completely dry. And what's happened, uh, what happens when you have a metal gearing running on his ax axle and the axle is, is the screw it makes noises 
I, I can I can feel the noise it it would make without grease um, when I'm turning it. So it's it's it got already a little bit of play and and, and a little bit of space. Yeah, this is this is not optimal. So I just used a little bit of, of grease, you know, put it back in. Oh, I love it. And the big advance of putting grease on it when you just want to get the shims back on, they are sticking to it. So. And then check the other shim. Then you can set it back into the arm. You just have to be a little bit careful, but you can do it pretty slowly, no stress, and it's in. And you will feel and hear the difference. No sound, even when you, when you press on it, there is no scratching. It just runs smooth. And this is, this is what I want. So now you can just put it back in. Maybe even put some grease on the gearing and your extruder will run absolutely quiet. So that's everything. Um, maybe in the next few days I will make another, another video to the extruder itself. Um, at the moment I have some stringing issues. Take care none of a sudden, just out of nothing. And I think I found a reason um, what's causing this again. So that I have these inconsistent prints. One day you have absolutely no string, on the other day you have a hell of a stringing and the next day you have none so what the fuck is happening here and i think i found the reason it's i think the ex extruder itself this mark 10 um i think costa bowden is putting completely through the code break and uh, the code end and to the heat break and going on directly up down to the nozzle i already tensioned it but i'm not happy with the solution i will change it to um, an all metal hot end where the bowden tube itself stops on the upper part of the cold end and the filament goes completely through the heat break. Um, I will show you if it's running or not, if this goes, but yeah, keep updated. See you guys. Um, one additional thing to the dual drive when you grease it, make sure that there is absolutely no grease in the filament area where the filament is transported because you don't want to have grease on your filament <laughs> then your extruder will be dead in a few minutes and it got pushed through and through and yeah just be careful that there is no grease on it and then you're running good